Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardware news episode. We actually have another hardware news episode coming up shortly because it's on a specific topic that's under embargo presently. This week though, we're talking about a lot of AMD news, talking about New York, the state, booting an ISP, and we've got some other items as well, including a semi-custom console solution from AMD provided to a Fami clone company, as they're known, on the web. So all that and more for this week's hardware news. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dies. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut liquid metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. First of all, a quick thanks to all of our supporters as we make our move into a new office. The move has been really expensive. We knew it'd be expensive just to furnish it and uproot a 10-year-old business and move it somewhere else. But uh, having the Patreon support from all of you who are Patreon backers on patreon.com slash gamersnexus and the store support especially has been tremendous in offsetting a lot of our costs and making it much less stressful than it would have been otherwise. So thank you very much for your support. And on that note, this shirt I'm wearing now, the GN Graph logo shirt, has finally been restocked after like a month out of stock. So a lot of them in stock on the store. You can get them in tri-blend or cotton. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our Graph logo shirts using the average 1% and 0.1% bars on the shirt design, just like we do in our graphs. And mod mats are going fast. The current round will be gone pretty soon based on current inventory levels. We've ordered more, but they'll be a little while till they get in. So if you want one, order a mod mat soon on the store. First real news item here, AMD's second generation Threader Per SKUs have been showing up on the web. This has been known for a while, but AMD is looking to launch Threader Per 2 in August this month. And several of the SKUs for the second gen have surfaced online. AMD's website was one of the accidental sources of this, where Reddit users discovered several models for second gen Threadripper CPUs on AMD's website, including what appears to be the flagship 32 core 64 thread 2990WX. And also, a Canadian retailer briefly listed this CPU on their website for roughly $1835 USD or thereabouts. So being that AMD has doubled the core and thread count from the previous 1950X that debuted at $1,000, that price isn't altogether startling. We have independently confirmed at Gamers Nexus that the 2990WX is in fact a 32 core 64 thread part, so the, they're not really rumors anyway, but the leaks that you saw are legitimate. We've also confirmed that its frequency is 3.0 gigahertz base and 4.2 boost. Not sure how XFR is working on this one just yet. And pricing should be about $1,800 on that part, just like was seen on that website. So all that information is accurate. We have confirmed it independently with multiple sources. We'll post the rest of the information on Embargo Lift, which is August 6th. And technically, just like with the Ryzen 2000 launch, we're not really included in this embargo. We're not under embargo for this product. Uh, we do have all the information, but just like last time, we're holding it and the remainder of the news just out of respect for our peers in the space. So we'll post our, uh, our news story with everyone else on embargo lift in about a day after this video goes live. Next news item, still AMD. AMD issued a press release stating that they've worked on a semi-custom SOC or system on chip for Chinese company Zongchan Subor to be sold in a gaming PC available later this month and a gaming console later this year. So this is kind of interesting. Both are going to use the same hardware, the PC and the console. Same hardware, different operating systems. The console will be available later on and will have a customized operating system as the company claims. Subor is currently most known for making Fami clones or knockoff Famicoms and knockoff consoles in general, just cheap consoles overall with built-in games. But the SOC created for them by AMD is a pretty significant step up from that status. So this is 
a move to use an SOC that will have four core eight threads for the CPU, running at 3.0 gigahertz peak operating frequency, while the Vega GPU has 24 CUs or compute units. Each CPU has 64 stream processors in it, if you want to do that math, but it's basically about half of what you'd get in a Vega 56, roughly. So uh, they're running at 1300 megahertz with a GPU. It's using eight gigabytes of GDDR5, big change from the Vega GPUs, typically seen with uh, HPM, of course. And it makes it competitive on a hardware level with the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Whether or not that's leveraged in the same way remains to be seen. Programming has a lot to do with it. The semi-custom SoC uses a 256-bit interface for its GDDR5 memory and includes other Vega-specific features like RPM, or Rapid Packed Math. Next one, Asus outs its own Z390 roadmap for Intel's upcoming 8-core launch. So an Anantech reader spotted that Asus had outed its Z390 motherboards ahead of launch. And these boards will support Intel's upcoming 8-core CPUs, likely named the 9900K, and also likely one of the first to launch. Presumably, these have a the boards have a stronger power delivery setup than the current generation boards out there, and that is a requirement by the new CPUs. The extra two cores will impact current requirements quite a bit, as you'd expect. ASUS's list of boards includes some heavyweights in the ROG family, though we don't yet know the specifications on the boards or if they've actually changed the VRM on the boards meant for eight core CPUs. So the company aims to ship its full listing of Maximus 11 boards, ROG Strix boards, Tough Gaming boards, and Prime motherboards, along with a Z390 Dragon, which is meant for the China market, so we'll probably never see it here in the US. Asus has already published its BIOS updates for existing motherboards to support eight core CPUs from Intel. And that gives, by the way, just some lead time. So if you ever wonder why motherboard vendors push very obvious BIOS updates ahead of a launch that even say support for new generation processors, it's because they have to make sure that as the channel clears of existing stock, which it's doing now, the boards that are getting restocked need to have updates so that as people invariably buy the new CPUs, hopefully it'll actually work and they won't need things like boot kits. Next news item is a combination of AMD and ASUS. So ASUS is working on a retrofit kit for cooling on their X399 motherboards. This is meant to upgrade existing X399 boards to better support overclocking on Threader Per 2 which will have significantly greater power requirements, particularly and primarily when overclocked. ASUS is launching 40 millimeter fans at 10 millimeter height for its uh, existing X399 boards, including SOC and vCore VRM brackets to mount those fans above the VRMs that are on the motherboards that are already out. We don't yet know if ASUS will be working on any new X399 motherboards. It doesn't presently look that way, but they are outfitting the existing boards with optional on request cooling kits if you did want to put Threadripper 2 into one of those boards and overclock it. Again, these are on request, so they will not be coming in the boxes for any of the existing motherboards out there. Next up is non-AMD and non-ASUS news, but very interesting. This is the state of New York booting an ISP. Recently, the state of New York's Public Service Commission banned ISP Charter Communications, who operates as Spectrum, from operating in the state. In 2016, Charter merged with Time Warner to become the second biggest ISP in the country. The state of New York approved the merger based on several contingencies. These contingencies included building the network out to 145,000 homes and businesses in underserved and rural areas, and increasing statewide broadband speeds of 100 megabits per second by the end of 2018. At this point, perhaps unsurprisingly to those of us who have the internet in our homes, Charter has failed to deliver on every performance metric required in the deal. So every single performance goal failed by Charter Communications, much like basically everything they ever do. So uh, New York cites a poor track record, fraudulent claims, and many instances of misconduct on a support level in the decision to revoke their approval of the 2016 merger and subsequently ban Charter from the state. Charter has been previously accused of throttling speeds for Netflix and even League of Legends of all things, with a 2017 lawsuit containing data that demonstrates decreased internet speeds for League of Legends players up to the point where Riot Games paid Spectrum for increased connection speeds. Additionally, Charter is accused of false advertising stemming from their failure to increase internet speeds as promised, and they also 
continued to advertise that they were delivering higher speeds, which were not actually available. So, one of many offenses, Charter has 60 days to design a and file a transition plan with the state while operating uninterrupted while a successor is planted in their place. New York has also issued a $3 million fine and referred the case to the state Supreme Court. This isn't strictly hardware news, but it does kind of underpin a pretty serious issue that affects all of us in the gaming or just technology audience, which is that internet providers uh, in general need to have some more competition. So a lack of choice and competition among ISPs, as I can tell you, signing an office and getting internet in there, uh, it's causing problems. So New, York action, New York's actions against a massive provider are mostly unprecedented, but definitely warranted given these considerations. Thousands of consumers are still left without knowing what might happen to their internet access. Next, if one ISP doesn't work out, one might have a second choice, but almost certainly not a third choice of ISP almost ever in your region unless they just piggyback off of existing lines from AT&T or Charter. So that's kind of the trouble that we're in, and I'll probably talk about this more as we've been working on our own internet issues with the new office. I have quite a lot to say about that, so we'll probably get into this topic a bit more. Uh, fun, well, I'll, I'll save most of it, but basically, for uh, equivalent speeds in our area, at least, to residential, you're paying about 10 times or more what you'd pay in residential for a business line, and actually, you don't get any better service, despite them promising that you often do. So I'll talk about that more in a separate piece. But uh, let's move on. AMD, back in the news. Needed a quick intermission there. AMD announced its B450 chipset ahead of motherboard announcements. This isn't really news at this point. It's been a week, but we've been moving, so didn't really talk about it. Basically, B450 chipset's out. It's a lower power successor to the B350 chipset. It's got memory profile updates like X470 had over X370. And uh, CPU VRM specifications are improved on some boards, but clearly not all of them. XFR2 supported, Precision Boost supported, all that stuff. Ryzen 2000 series supported out of the box. And that's more or less it. We have not done any serious B450 content yet, but as we finalize our move, we'll probably get into it. Just couldn't get around to it with the craziness going on right now. Last news item before hardware sales, NDXT acquired Forge. So NDXT announced that they acquired Forge, which is a company known for software capturing and sharing gameplay footage. This is a continued bid in NZXT's stake in software development, something they've really wanted to get into with CAM and later improvements to CAM, hopefully. And this announcement echoes the one from Corsair, who recently purchased Elgato, as you might recall, and is highlighting a trend of PC hardware makers showing an increased interest in the streaming market. Certainly a good thing. NZXT, like Corsair, shared few details of their plans, but both NZXT and Corsair have undertaken serious software initiatives on their own and both need a bit of help on their own proprietary software. NZXT's CAM and Corsair's IQ would be the most directly comparable here. It could be that NZXT plans to leverage Forge's software expertise to expand their capabilities with CAM going forward uh, to potentially include gameplay streaming and capturing, and Corsair could end up doing the same with IQ or some similar software. So that's it for the news. Quick hardware sales notes, and these have been interesting to me as we've been buying a lot of stuff for the office. Uh, so AMD is still purging last gen. If you need some kind of processor and you don't care if it's the latest and greatest, you just want something that's good and about a year old. AMD still got their Ryzen 1000 series, and as in the desktop parts, and the original Threadripper series at purge prices. At this point, we would encourage you to wait for Threadripper 2 to launch because we don't actually know how much of an upgrade that is. It's certainly an upgrade, just like Ryzen 2 is an upgrade. Whether or not it's relevant to you kind of depends on what you would want to use Threadripper for and whether or not the price differential makes a difference for you. Because with Threadripper 1 on fire sale right now, depending on the rest of Threadripper 2's pricing, which we'll talk about in about a day, it might still be a worthwhile purchase if you don't need the absolute best and you just need something for like say a video transcoding box in the corner or something like that. So anyway, we'll link a couple of those hardware sales below. We also saw a monitor, an LG 34UC79G-B 34-inch ultra-wide monitor. It's 2560 by 1080, 144 hertz and FreeSync, and that was marked down pretty significantly at time of filming the video. We'll link both of those below. As always, thank you for watching. 
And again, seriously, thank you for supporting us via Patreon, via the GN store, the merch store. Both of those avenues have made this move way more feasible. I mean, we're, to give you an idea of the difference, the support there means that we can buy, for example, all the furniture that we want to fully furnish the space from the start rather than buying stuff later. And that means that we can just immediately be way more efficient than we are here. So that sort of startup moving process, it takes a while to move in. It's, it's a long time to get it all set up. But once we're in there, it's basically go to, it's pedal to the floor, uh, as opposed to kind of waiting around and buying more furniture later and interrupting our process to move more stuff in. So we're getting it all done at once. Really like that process. And in large part, it is thanks to the support via the store and Patreon. Anyway, subscribe for more as always. Thank you for watching. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of these freshly restocked shirts or the mod bat before this round's gone. Again, they sell it pretty fast these days. And I'll see you all next time.